Hey, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host Amy from Penventure. Welcome to another fountain pen review. This time we are going for one of my personal highlights that resides in my collection of writing instruments. It's none other than the Nikaya Dorsal Fin V2. Hmm, how should I say this? Being a fountain pen retailer, I'm surrounded by a lot of writing instruments. New releases, new things showing up, inventory, and uh, it's, it's, it's a blessing. I get to share so many beautiful writing instruments with everyone on the channel, but lately I've been going into my personal collection quite, quite often in order to review fountain pens that I know you've been asking for reviews for quite some time. In True Pen Venture Style, I'm gonna show you the fountain pen, I'm gonna show you the details, we're going to share some information regarding the company, then I'm gonna show you a side-by-side -side size comparison, writing sample with a quite interesting nib, soft elastic uh, point, and then we will go into my personal opinions after owning this fountain pen for quite a few months now. And uh, I'm gonna show you just briefly what this fountain pen is offered in when you order it, and uh, we have a natural wood box, it's inside a cardboard sleeve. If we open it like so, inside you find a pen kimono that you can use to carry your fountain pen with you wherever you go, proprietary Nakaya converter, and some ink cartridges, blue black ink, and uh, this is the Nakaya Dorsal Fin V2. There is another version, V1, which we reviewed on the channel. I'm gonna link the video up here. In the V2, I opted for a different finish, Kurata Menuri, and a different nib because I had the experience of um, trying out this uh, gold nib, fine point, which is a little bit too fine for my taste. And I opted on my V2 to have a soft elastic medium point. I'm gonna briefly touch a few things regarding the company because you already know uh, Nakaya, Japanese based pen company, which is hand making uh, fountain pens and their specialty is coating them uh, in Urushi lacquerware. They are uh, using ebonite fountain pens, ebonite being a very, very nice material in order to be coated in Urushi, very, very steady. It is an amazing uh, company with so much history and so much heritage. And there is a video with them uh, hand making fountain pens. If that doesn't get you excited, I don't know what can get you excited in regards to fountain pens. So I'm gonna try to link the video up here. You can check this out and see for yourself how they are hand making their writing instruments. In regards of their designs, we have a few models which are popular like the Decapod, which is a faceted fountain pen. There is the uh, Piccolo Writers, big, small. Uh, then we have the dorsal fins. And uh, what characterized this model is the actual appearance with a shark fin, the dorsal fin of a shark, if you look at like so. 90% sure that you can pinpoint that this design has something to do with Japan because it's a play on uh, so many aspects of Japan and their culture. We're talking about the katana sword, which has this uh, sort of swooped shape like this with two points and let's not make this video too long i'm gonna zoom in and i'm gonna jump into the details of this nakaya dorsal fin v2 one of the attributes that can characterize this impressive shape from nakaya is originality and exclusivity because i haven't seen anything like this fountain pen there is faceted fountain pens, we have spiral fountain pens, we have square fountain pens. Nothing comes close to having a fountain pen which is asymmetrical shaped and it looks stunning. It has these two fins right here. Contrary to what have you seen uh, in video reviews prior, this is not made in lacquer in Urushi lacquer because it's quite impossible. I think this is a ebonite body which is shaped to be with fins and then we have Urushi coating on it and uh, it's, it's only accentuating the shape with this impressive lacquer. Urushi lacquer, it's the sap of the lacquer tree which is mixed with all sorts of ingredients, natural ingredients and uh, a lot of pigments and this lacquer is applied in different layers and each layer contains sanding, 
curing, drying, and it takes a lot of time. Applying multiple layers of Rushi lacquer on a fountain pen, it's going to give it a very, very strong finish. Also, something very, very nice regarding Rushi, you can actually build the look of a color. One look at this fountain pen, you can clearly see that's black, but on the edges, we can see there is faint shades of red, and the name of this finish is Kuro Tamenuri. Tamenuri is the actual technique of using different colors uh, in different layers in order to actually have this visual effect of uh, having black over red and on the edges we have some sanding which reveals the, the, the red color underneath. We have here Midori Tamenuri on my other Nakaya Dorsal Fin and uh, this is black over green and in time this is going to accentuate this color this black will be more transparent and this is one of the wonderful things regarding urushi it's going to age according to how you treat your fountain pen if you keep it in direct sunlight which i don't recommend you do uh, try to actually hide it away from the sun because it will change its appearance, its color. Right here on the finial, we can closely see the actual shape. We have a pointy cap finial, very, very beautiful. We can see this fin and also the color of the Kurota Menuri, the black over red uh, urushi coating we can closely see that the shape is going to flow very very nice and start to fade in and turn into the circular shape of the cap now let's use three quarters of a turn to uncap this impressive fountain pen and we are greeted by the nib the nakaya nibs are made in gold 14 karat and they are available in a number of sizes extra fine fine medium broad in essence plenty of sizes for your taste regardless what you're looking for you will find it at nakaya ordering directly from nakaya or through a retailer you can actually pick the color of your nib and in my case I went with ruthenium black which is this gorgeous gorgeous nib black color and my nib is a medium but it's not your everyday medium it's a soft medium and actually I added elastic in the mix and uh, this comes with this two cutouts on the right and left shoulder of the nib and uh, it makes the nib a lot more flexy heart shaped beautiful breather hole and the nib is powered by a plastic feeder the section is on the chunky uh, side if you ask me in regards of the overall proportions of the fountain pen this is a little bit chunkier although the fountain pen is not that heavy uh, and the nib is not that big in the ratio to the section I would love to have something a little bit more thinner in my opinion we have this part right here which is flared out again beautiful transition in between the black and the red on the section then the section starts to pick up in girth around here we have the capping threads those are not sharp at all and they are covered in urushi again beautiful array of colors right here at the base of the threads red black everything shows super super nice moving further we have a step up right here and the barrel starts with the same shape just like the cap and continues down till this point right here and starts to pick up in the shape of the fin the fin from the barrel of the fountain pen is different from the fin of the cap and it's much more elongated and it's much more abrupt in regards of the shaping and right here the end finial again beautiful transition in between the black colors and the red colors of the underneath uh, urushi lacquer and for me this urushi finish is just like glowing from inside the red comes out and shows so so beautiful and I, I love Urushi. I don't know why, uh, lately it's been a thing that's growing and growing on me. Moving further and reveal the filling system for this fountain pen and it's a cartridge converter which is provided with the fountain pen and also this fountain pen can be used with the cartridges which are provided with it and I'm very very curious to see one of these blue black inks blue black is one of my favorite colors in regards of the details this is what I have for you let's go into a side-by-side -side size comparison because this fountain pen its uh, shape it's a little bit different from what you may have at this point in your collection and I am very very excited to show you this fountain pen side by side something that 
it's a little bit more known to you. Here we have the Nakaya Dorsal Fin V2 next to a Pilot A23, a Visconti Homo Sapiens, Nakaya Dorsal Fin V1, Monte Grappa 1930 Extra, Sailor, Pro Gear King of Pen. Now let's have a look uncapped. In this scenario, the Nakaya Dorsal Fin is a little bit taller than a Visconti Homo Sapiens. It's just the same like a Nakaya Dorsal Fin V1, taller than a Monte Grappa 1930 Extra, and also taller than a Pro Gear King of Pen. Cap like this, the Nakaya Dorsal Fin V1 measures 150 millimeters. Uncapped in riding position, it's going to measure 143 millimeters. The total weight of the fountain pen, fully inked and uncapped, is 25.5 grams. And cap like this is 31.5 grams. Come on! I'm gonna leave those comments for my personal opinion regarding this fountain pen. And let's get into the writing sample. The final one is already inked up. This is the ink that I have inside. It's Tatcha Beni Zakura. Beautiful ink and uh, Japanese ink, Japanese fountain pen. They kind of go together. And let's try this impressive nib. So let's give it a try. Pen. Nakaya. Dorsal. Fin V2 Kuro Taminuri. We have the ink Tacha Bini Za Kura and Nib fourteen carat gold, and this is a medium soft elastic paper 52 GSM Tomoe River paper and let's go with the wetness test this is a medium nib I would expect it to be a little bit more wet if it was a European medium but it's quite conservative in regards of the flow and I let this nib to write just like I got it. I didn't want it to change anything because I wanted first to have how it's writing coming from Nakaya. Now some normal figure of eights and uh, it's, it's a skinny medium. It's not that skinny. I don't know if uh, the actual uh, fact that the nib is already soft and elastic and it's going to open up the tines a little bit more quicker and without too much pressure uh, it's going to make it much more fat than a normal stiff medium nib from Nakaya but in my opinion this doesn't look like a Japanese medium it's more closer to a European medium some flex and no this is what you have been expecting from this nib and let's let's try this nib it's quite soft it's not as soft as for example a extra flexibility nib from scribo but there is a lot of snap back and uh, the flexing is very very beautiful feed keeps up with this nib very well let's let's push it up uh, with some speed to see if we can railroad it no this is a good sign uh, and the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. No skipping, no hard starts, nothing whatsoever. Beautiful in riding. Now let's try out a more flamboyant, flexible uh, style of a riding for the same sentence. And we have... the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. 
small railroad right here nothing to be scary of and after flexing the snip for so much time i believe the feeder has its limitations but again beautiful rider it is a little bit more feedbacky than uh, i normally like and i grown to like feedbacky nibs but this is a little bit too much in my opinion for my taste probably for the next nakaya dorsifin v2 because i have one in order i will go with a different finish and also a medium point normal nib with a 14 karat gold nib and now it is time for my personal opinions regarding the Nakaya Dorsal Fin V2. And this is the part that you don't want to skip it. So before starting it, uh, if you enjoy my content, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. This will help me a lot with the YouTube algorithm. And if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing to the PenVenG YouTube channel. Down below, click subscribe, turn on notification bell on, and let's get it going with my personal opinions regarding the Nakaya Dorsal Fin V2. If you watch my video reviews, you have to know that this is the part of my format in which I am nervous. Because I have to talk about the fauna van based on my experience, based on my taste, on what I am feeling about a certain fountain pen or a certain design or some certain features of that specific fountain pen. And it is not that easy. I still remember the first time that I've seen an Accardo Sofim V2 being reviewed on YouTube and uh, I said right there that I have to have one of these fountain pens. Long story short, I own the fountain pen and uh, this is my experience with it. I love the overall design of this fountain pen. The unique way that this fountain pen is being uh, presented in a lot of reviews. I've seen different finishes. I have been uh, ever since just mesmerized by what this fountain pen can be. In person, I have to say that it's that impressive, but it comes with a few things that I personally don't grow to like a lot lately. The shape is not that, um, let's just say, ergonomic or practical. Because in writing, I've seen the Nakato Sofim V1 being much, much more comfortable and uh, prone to uh, actually write with it. The Nakato Sofim V2 is something that you are going to adore as a shape, as a fountain pen, as a concept, much more than a functional writing instrument due to the, 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 the things that are particular regarding the, the asymmetrical aspect of this shape. It's a very, very beautiful finish, this uh, incredible Kurota Menori, but just take into consideration that this black, it's a fingerprint magnet. You will see every single fingerprint, and if you are OCD, just like me, you will do this every time that you pick this fountain pen up. Hmm, let's see, what else, what else? The nib. Well, the nib, it's a little bit more feedbacky, just like I told you. It is not super, super flexy like a Pilot FA nib in order to justify the feedback and uh, the, the things that are particular regarding the flexibility of a nib. This is one of the options that I wouldn't go for the second time. It is not anything that can hinder you from owning such a fountain pen. I do have plenty of other nibs and I just wanted to test out this nib. But if you are a owner of a few fountain pens and you look forward at having a much more uh, practical uh, way of owning an Nakara Dorsal Fin V2, I would advise you to pick a normal nib because it's less expensive and also it will make you use the fountain pen much more easy much more comfortable and in much more uh, writing scenarios the way that this fountain pen is actually capturing the light and this shape it's incredible this is one of the strong points that attracted me to this design this unique shape is just like a katana sword which i adore and i think it's a showstopper and a conversation starter and it's a must if you collect uh, Urushi fountain pens. If you like Urushi fountain pens, I do believe a dorsal fin, regardless if it's a one or two with one fin or double fins, you have to have it in your collection. It's very, very annoying to actually go forward and find that one combination that aligns both of these fins. Overall, I think it's a wonderful riding instrument, although it comes with a hefty cost. 
I believe it's going to be closer to $1.8 thousand dollars. I don't want to sell it. I don't want to pass it along for something else. I want to keep it, but it is not the answer to all of my problems in regards of writing instruments. It's not possibly the most comfortable found to write with it. Uh, also the nib is not the smoothest nib uh, and the most wonderful nib that I have in my personal collection, but by far it's a very original, beautiful Nakaya, which I am going to keep in my personal founder pen collection. Let me know your opinion in the comment section down below. If you have any other questions regarding the Nakaya Dosofin V2, use the comment section. If you enjoy my content, give this video a big thumbs up. This will help me a lot. Scroll down a little bit, you'll find the details for our website, our social media accounts, my phone number, email, anything and everything that you may need in order to get in contact with me. Thank you for spending your time with me on the Penventure YouTube channel, reviewing the Nakadro Sulfin V2 Kurotame Nuri. Help me to grow the Penventure YouTube channel, subscribe right now, turn the notification bell on, and if you want to continue watching my YouTube videos, I'm gonna leave you this right here, you can click and enjoy. As always, I'm your host Amy, and I'll forward seeing you next video. Take care, stay safe, bye bye.